We are live, and the show is this is Dave Woodson live with Wine with Woodson live with Bill Crane. We're about goals tonight. Before we get started, let's make sure we're live in the group. So I'm gonna refresh the page, and so I can actually see. So we we, we can see the comments and 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 be live, but we cannot see who makes the comments. So I always open the other the, the screen up, like who made the comment. Who's, who's, being, who's being the smart ass and who's not being the smart ass? I think everyone. Jerry, you can guess who's making the comments. Yup. Yeah, absolutely. Hold on. Work for me. Cannot see. No. Shit. Who makes the comments? So I already opened the other screen. It's like, who made the comment? Modern technology kicks my butt sometimes. Uh oh. Did you start drinking already? No, not at all. I'm stone uh, sober today. Yo, yeah, absolutely. As 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 I explained to my wife, so I explained to someone earlier, it's hard to explain to a wife while you're drinking at noon when she's home. Yeah, no doubt. I don't hear any feedback, so that's a good thing. Well, well, because I muted it real quick. Oh, okay. Warren Adams says Bill Trump is in the house tonight. Is it is it a reference to me or you? I'm going to assume it's you. People always say I look like Trump. I don't know if that's a compliment or an insult. Um, I guess it depends if I'm hearing it from a Republican or a Democrat. Oh, Bill Trump. I, I was, he's always good. I, he always calls me Bill Clinton for some reason. Oh. Bill I Trump. I just, saw, I just saw Bill Trump. I saw When I saw Bill, I don't know about Clinton. Bill uh, Trump. Yeah. That's perfect. I gotta turn my sound on. I'm gonna blow my ears off. All right. Michael Gallagher says Bill Crane and Dave Woodson, what's up? No drinks for lunch today. When you work from home, it's really hard to explain to the wife why you're drinking at noon. And usually when I have a drink at lunch, it's usually just a beer or two for with with, with the wings that I have. And the only reason I'm having wings or beer because I'm because I'm 25 feet from Buffalo Buffalo Wild Wings. Oh, that'd be nice. Is that is the drinking uh, an Indiana thing, or did you pick that up while you lived in Grays Lake, Illinois? So that's an Indiana thing. All right. Drinking for lunch at Purdue and things like that. Yeah, I'm happy to hear that I look taller on camera, but standing next to Andrew, I look like a midget. Wow. <laughs> that dude is like eight feet tall. Standing next to Andrew, you look like a genius. Let's just leave it at that. Well, <clears throat> I wasn't going to say anything, but since you brought it up, <laughs> Misha, Misha says hello, hello. What's up, Misha? So let's get let's get in the goals. So I I really had nothing prepared for the night for this tonight, but I but I already know I know about goals. So how, how, when I make a goal, what's what's the five things or the six things I should do when I make a goal that I should be looking out for when I make a goal? Well, first and foremost, I think the biggest mistake that agents make is first of all they they set goals and they don't even know what a goal really is. See, to, to me, I actually don't even set goals. Like, because to, to me, goals are like where I want to be in 10 years. Goals don't have, goals are like, most people don't even know what they mean. They're meaningless. It's like, well, I want to make a million dollars this year, or I want to lose 50 pounds. But it, it's not measurable. And that, that's why most people never hit their goals because they don't have a measuring stick to measure what their goals are. So, first and foremost, in my opinion, forget about goals. Go, goals are ridiculous. Uh, you should have an objective. What do I want to do every single day? One of the ways that you can, about the only thing you could use a goal for, Dave, is like, in, in my opinion, like, let's say, uh, for, first of all, how many uh, deals, or how do you want to measure your success? Do you want to measure it in terms of transactions or cash money in your pocket uh, in 2019? I don't want cash money in my pocket. Okay. I don't care. I don't give you one transaction as long as I make 200 grand this year. I'm happy. Well, I have always said that the perfect year in real estate is one transaction for $30 million. But unless you uh, live in Malibu, California or Manhattan, that's kind of tough. So, how much do you want to make in 2019? Uh, I actually wrote it out today 100, 180,000 GCI. Okay, so, $180,000. And do you have do you know what your numbers are in other words your average transaction value in your marketplace as well as what your personal average transaction value is 
The average average right now has been the last time I looked was one fifty. My average was one ninety five. So, what's your average commission? R- roughly about uh, five thousand dollars. And that's after your splits or however it works yeah. with your broker. And right. now, is that is that your average or the marketplace's average? That's my average. And is your average higher or lower than the marketplace? Higher. And do you want it? And are you happy with it around that level, or do you want it to be even higher? Do you want I to go like after it to be higher? But I'm, but I'm, but I'm, I'm not displeased with where it's at. But I would like for it to be higher. The last, okay, so, two, the last two are right where I bought my sweet spot: two hundred and sixty and three hundred and sixty. So, if you want to make one hundred eighty thousand dollars, how many transactions do you have to close? That's what it comes down to. So, we, when we work it out backwards, right? So if you want to make $180,000 and the average deal, you're going to bring home $5,000. It means you have to bring home 20 deals per hundred grand. And so another $80,000 is what? Another 16 deals. So you need to do 36 transactions. So how close were you to that this year? Not even in the ballpark. (laughs) Okay. So the question is, what do you have to do to close 36 transactions? So how do you figure that out? You figure it out by, okay, well, how many calls do I normally make uh, to get a lead? Or how many people do I have to follow up with to book a listing appointment? Depending on what you're doing, are you doing marketing? Are you doing prospecting? Are you doing networking? So you have to write out all the different activities that you do. And there might be some activities that you love to do, some activities that you hate to do, right? Which activities are you... uh, better at? In other words, which ones you have a better conversion rate at? Because that's how you determine what you're going to have to do to make that money. So like if you say, well, I want to make $180,000 this year, but you have no idea what you're going to have to do to get there other than close more sales. Well, then that's not measurable. It's not implementable. It's not a strategy. There's there's nothing you can do. It, it's just like hope, you know, like Hope and change. <laughs> like that didn't work out too good for us either. Um, it never does. So what we want to do, Dave, is make real estate great again for you. And <laughs> that should upset some of our Democratic listeners. But I'm really not trying to be like Trump. What I'm saying is you have to have a plan and you have to work to plan. Goals to say I want to make $180,000 without knowing what you're going to have to do every single day in order to crush that goal you're just setting yourself up for disappointment and failure. You're not going to get there. So my question to you, and I'm not picking on you. Because no, feel free because I don't mind. Everyone who's why, listening, why everyone who's listening is in the same boat, right? Uh, including Jay Kim. Although I know that Jay Kim knows his numbers. His numbers are 8%. Uh, but the question is, Dave, do you know your numbers? Do you know what you have to do every single day so that you can guarantee, so that you can look at your wife and say, hey, babe, I'm going to bring home $180,000 in 2019. So what are we going to do with all that money, all that extra money? Where do you want to go on vacation? It's a guarantee. You don't have to wonder. I'm going to do it because I know exactly what I have to do to make that happen. And if anything, you're going to do more than your expectation, right? You know, you, you, if you say, I have to make this many calls a day, you do a little bit more than that. And then as time goes along, you'll get better at converting, better at closing. You'll start getting referrals from more deals and you actually end up blowing way past your numbers. So my question to you and everyone else is, do you know your numbers? So if you want to do $180,000 this year, and that means you have to close 36 transactions, first of all, how many listings and how many sales is that? And what do you have to do in order to close your 36 transactions? Well, well, I'm already no. I already was talking to someone this morning about it. I'm, I'm already going to be calling for salon owners and uh, expireds, which are two things I already don't like to do at this point. Because I've always said when I've had Jason Morris on the show, I would never call for salon owners. Next year, I am actually. Actually, I started the day. As a matter of fact, and how did that go? Uh, <laughs> but it is what it is. I mean, you've got to start someplace. Absolutely, and you got to. You gotta, you, Walter Payton didn't did not make a, make a touchdown on his first time he touched the ball. Uh-huh. Jordan no, didn't, didn't. Ball, slam, slam the ball, slam, slam, make a slam dunk the first time he touched the basketball either. Yep. And if you so, start now, come January first rolls around when the when the big glut of expires hit January first, you're ready to roll. 
well, yeah, we should really be ready to roll every day. And that's what knowing our numbers is about. So if, if you're going to close 36 transactions this year, how many listings and how many buy sides do you think that will be? What's your target? I want to. I want to have a roll a rolling list, the rolling a rolling twenty listings at any 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 at any given moment. Hold on, Mary's Mary Mary's Mary Mary Ann Spearman's got a good question. She closed between thirty five and forty three a year. I know what I need to do, but I need to need a, need a team of a team at this point. So, what would you say to Mary Ann at this point? How would you uh, say to Mary Ann to get a team? Well, getting a team is pretty simple, but it depends on some certain factors. For example, what's your average transaction value? So in other words, if you close 35 to 43 deals in Southern California, you have a lot more money on the table than you do if you're in Chesterton, Indiana. So you can probably just go ahead and hire the best people possible, pay them a salary to support you. But if you're in the lower uh, price point market, then there's other things you can do. Like for example, bring on a buyer's agent that's gonna help do some of that work. So you're gonna feed them the leads, but they have to check on the properties. Maybe they take photos, maybe they help you uh, do some of the marketing. Uh, you know, you can offload some of those tasks to the buyer's agent uh, in exchange for you spoon feeding them. So it really, all of that is dependent on what your price point is, what you can afford. Uh, there really is no one size fits all answer. For, for I mean, I, I, I wonder how many listings she's carrying at any one point. And, and even that, like if you're in a hot market, 20, 20 listings, my turnover in a month, my turnover in a week. Um, although most markets are cooling right now, uh, even that, like uh, people in Southern California are complaining uh, that the market is cooling off. But I know that you and I here in the Midwest, we've never even experienced what they call cool. Uh, you know, their cold would be our scorching hot. Right. Oh, we can't wait. We can't, we kind of had it this summer where all the houses are going to the market for one or two days and going and flying off the flying off the shelves within a day or two. Yeah, we did. We did have it this summer, and that was the first time that I had ever experienced anything like that. I mean, people were like, "We'll go see it this weekend." It's like, no, if you wait this weekend, we will not see this house. Yeah, exactly. And I've had I've had more than a few times I've had that conversation with somebody. It's like, hey, you waited. You should not have waited. Now it's so, gone. So Mary's got six listings right now. I mean, I can tell you, Dave, if you can maintain 20 listings, you'll you'll blow way past your, your mark. I mean, uh, most people that maintain 20 listings are closing close to 100 uh, properties, you know, unless it's a really, really slow market because, you know, you're going to generate all kinds of business from those listings. You're going to get sign calls. Uh, you're going to not only get sign calls from buyers, but for other people that you're going to convert into listings as well. I so, don't get a lot of sign calls for some reason. Do you put signs in the yard? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I, this year, this is the first year that I put a sign in the yard. I put a four by four sign. So it was yeah. a big, big sign. Big so what sign. does your sign look like? What What's on your sign? Name, website, phone number. And company name. And so on your website, is it one of those sites where it's going to point them to that particular home? Like with a no, it, is, it, does, it does not. It, it, it's in fact, it's my. It's actually my old site that was going. That actually went to a placer site, but now that's oh, yeah? actually changing this year. It's going to a Kunkun version, and it's going to be. Um, probably what, I, what, I, what I'm going to end up doing is uh, building after speaking to you last week or two weeks ago about building building individual landing pages for each each home. Yeah, that is really the way to go. Um, yeah, I want. I would love to do. I would love to do a segment on that sometime because uh, I see what agents are doing with with Zillow and and all these other lead generation services. And you know, most people don't know this, uh, but you know, Zillow's uh, calculation is is really that they're going to take a hundred percent of your commission. Uh, that's the way they've calculated it by their own numbers. Uh, the, uh, a premier agent will close a transaction about every 10 weeks. And so for example, in my marketplace, they want $3,000 for a zip code that they'll also sell to 30 or 40 other agents. And then if an agent's gonna close, the average transaction value is $7,500, right? So two months, you're at six grand, another two weeks, you're at 7,500 bucks. And you just happen to have paid them 7,500 bucks over that 10 week period. And, I, and I've worked this out with agents all across the country. And, and it seems to work that way, no matter where you happen to be. 
So, I mean, it's genius for them. Like, how do you get smart people to sign up for a program that is pretty much a break even? Uh, I don't know how they do it, but they're doing it and they're doing it like crazy. So one objective is um, obviously to be able to beat Zillow with their own game. And one of the ways they can do that is by setting up uh, lead generation funnels. And there's even ways to use Zillow's multi-billion dollar brand to give you leverage. I've got somebody else who's messaging me saying they can't get into the event uh, because probably an admin hasn't approved them. Uh, so if anyone's <laughs> listening, please approve people. Uh, Vilia Garbanke. Told to check out uh, my YouTube page tomorrow morning, and it'll be, it'll be live on my YouTube page in the morning by, by 10 o'clock, I promise. All right. And that's YouTube back, back, YouTube.com backslash Dave Woodson. Absolutely. Do you have an Instagram, Dave? Oh, I certainly do. Oh, yeah. Awesome. I actually just got an Instagram like a few days ago. So uh, I, I'm exploring that. It's pretty cool. Um, I don't know. I got like 500 followers at this point or something, nice. um, which is nothing like a, a friend of mine in L.A. He's not a real estate guy, but he's got, uh, geez, he's got like 8 million followers. He's one of the biggest dudes. And like, he'll post something on there. And in 24 hours, he'll have like 1.2 million likes. So it's, how does it, how does what, what, what is it? What does he do to get the 8 million followers? Well, he's a, he's a big YouTuber. He started his YouTube channel like a long time ago. Like I can't remember when, you know, whenever YouTube first came out. Right. And uh, he's gotten to the point where he's really good. Um, you know, so he, he put, he basically has a reality show, right? So he's got like 20 million subscribers on YouTube. And, you know, as soon as Instagram opened up, obviously he told people that he's on Instagram and then they went and liked him there too. And you're absolutely right. Um, YouTube, YouTube is, a, I laugh, I laugh at people who are using Facebook for video. And don't get me wrong, Facebook video is awesome. But it's not the long, it's not, it's not, it's not the, that's not the history of, it's not the future of video. YouTube still is. That's where everybody goes. It's my, it's my daughter. I watch, I want to watch come in and she's in, coming to one tonight. Today she's home from school. Yeah. And half the day watching YouTube channels, YouTube videos all the time. And half and of them I can't stand because it's makeup channels. It's like, come on, you got better things to do to watch some chick put makeup on for Christ's sake. And, and but then, <laughs> an hour later, I'm watching some guy mow his lawn. Yeah, exactly. Drive, drive his car. So I'm no better than she is, but yeah, it's amazing what you can learn on YouTube. And I think I need to, what I need to find somebody who does YouTube on a regular basis, who knows the hell they're doing as a roller or as a business owner, and get them on the show. Yeah, I think uh, the formula is this is really simple. It doesn't matter if it's YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, uh, whether you're door knocking, cold calling. Uh, every aspect of business is, is in reality, it's the same. And, and that is you, you have to know who your audience is, right? So and, and be in the right place at the right time. And you have to make them an offer for something that they want. So like so some of these huge YouTubers, like you said, your daughter's watching people put on their makeup. And that's, uh, <laughs> I don't understand it, right? But some of those people will get millions of views. Uh, but then how do they monetize it? Like some of these people that have a million followers aren't making any money other than what they generate uh, just from like YouTube ads, like you can monetize your channel or whatever. But if uh, you have the right message to market match and you're offering people something that they're looking for in a way that they can raise their hand and get it, then whether you're on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, whatever that platform happens to be, then you can monetize that audience uh, because they they have a problem that you can solve and they know, like, and trust you and they, they want you to solve it for them. And YouTube is is cheap as hell to advertise on right now. So all these all these landing pages that you're wanting to create, you, you, you can put, build a landing page and go on there and every every dumbass agent in your area that has a YouTube channel, that you can, you can advertise on their YouTube channel for next to nothing. I mean, yep. last to nothing for a penny of you. And get, yep. it, get get traffic off their own site, off their and, off off their hard work. In Zuckerberg is, I don't know what path he's going down, but it, it seems like Facebook's been a little screwed up lately. Um, and even just during this whole Black Friday, Cyber Monday, uh, they they raised rates on people so much because they just had a bad quarter that like advertisers end up not advertising as much. So now when they come out with their next numbers. 
you know, I can virtually guarantee that this cycle isn't going to be what they expected either, because it, it's just to the point where they're just trying to like literally do what Zillow does. And it seems what all the advertisers do is once they get to a certain point, uh, they want to figure out how they can make a hundred percent of the revenue generated from the advertisers on their platform. And I, I can't blame them for wanting to do that, but ultimately it's a self-defeating uh, formula because advertisers are going to look for a cheaper, better, faster, more efficient solution. Well, I've dram dramatically reduced my spend on Zillow. Yeah. And it just, just enough to maintain a presence on there, a decent, a okay presence. And I'm actually feeling like I've gotten more quality, better quality leads. When I, when I get a lead, I get a better quality lead. But the one thing I've noticed, the live transfers now, the phones, the phone calls suck. Oh, they're, yeah. They have static in them. They're, they're, there's a delay. Uh -huh. And there's somebody out there trying to screw with my numbers because they call me every morning at the same time. One ring, they hang up on me. They're calling me through my Zillow number, and, they, and they're and they just trying to screw my Zillow, my Zillow numbers up. So that's all they're trying to do. Uh, it's very possible. I, I've... Uh tested the platform because Zillow is always trying to sell me like I'm sure they're trying to sell everyone else as well and I never tell them to go on the way because I I'm actually weird in that I love sales pitches like so I love hearing what someone's sales pitch is and uh, I'm always amazed by the, the pitch that they make isn't good like I mean if an agent actually sits back and analyzes what they're being told like there's virtually no way they would sign up but yet agents do sign up. So it tells me that they don't actually listen and, and analyze what they're being sold. Uh, and, and that's why most people that are on Zillow aren't really making any money. I mean, I, I actually love Zillow in terms of like from a, a public perspective, right? So like if, if I want to get information uh, on listings, if I want to look in Chesterton, Indiana, you know, I'd actually go to Zillow in not realtor.com because for me, I, I just think that it works better. And, and that's unfortunate. Uh, it would be nice if, if realtors could patronize their own. It's not really our site either, is it? Because they've sold it off to somebody. So, but the bottom line is, I just don't think it works as good. Desperate agents sign up for, for all kinds of things, according to Jay Kim. And Jay's right. Jay is right. Absolutely. And I guess Andrew Gavin is watching, according to Jay. So, Who's making tons of money on YouTube ads? My clients make over 40,000 a month. That's what Mary, Marianne Spearman said. So she must have a YouTuber who's a client. Yeah, I mean, sell them. Talk to me, Marianne. I'd love to, see, love to talk to him. He's getting me get on the show. Is yeah, he advertising on YouTube or is he a, or is he a YouTuber? Yeah, because there's a I do know difference. that they don't, like when, they don't like when you talk about meth. Why were you talking about meth, Dave? Because <laughs> I actually showed a house, and we we put an offer on the house, mm -hmm. and then we kept the counter offer. Then we were got the we were at the counter offer their counter offer, and just we were going to do is well, we need to disclose something. Well, what's that? Well, this was a meth house. Huh? Stop the boat. Yeah, you you got to disclose this is a meth house. Yes. Okay. Hold on a minute. Let me talk to my client. Don't do anything. Don't accept our offer. Don't do anything like that. Let me talk to my client. I'll call you back in 20 minutes. Yep. Called my client. He says, "No, I don't want this house because it because he because he we were in the we were in the garage, and you, you know you just get you just get a feeling you're you're, you're smelling something. You know, I I never smelled this before. It smells weird. Yeah, and that's what he was. You know, we were, we went we went in this house five times, and you're he only was one to check out the garage. He was I just smell something in this garage like I've never smelled before. And because we I knew I knew I've known him since birth. He's never smoked wow. meth in his life." Neither have I, but you just, I just, we, we both smelled something in the garage and it was, it was a meth house and it's, it's industrial waste and you have always have to disclose that at this point. So we backed out of the yeah. deal. So I did a video on that and they demonetized my, they demonetized my video on that for that one day, one show. Wow. Cause advertisers don't want to advertise meth. No, absolutely not. Which and, surprises me for some reason because meth, meth, meth is the best seller out there right now. <laughs> I wouldn't know, but what really surprises me is like 
you know, the, first of all, like nobody wants a meth house. There's all kinds of danger to it. I had a couple in REO space and the banks just ended up tearing them down because nobody wants them. But what blows me away is I don't see the tax assessors like lowering property taxes uh, on any meth houses. And, well, and I, don't know why, I don't know why anybody would, would want one. Uh, that's just really because bad. You always got to disclose that. You always have yeah. to disclose that. And, you're stuck with it. It's a scar well, letter at this point. Well, it's like that Chinese drywall. You know, the uh, it just soaks up that chemical and constantly is releasing it, so it becomes a dangerous, poisonous environment. So back to goals, real quick. Yeah. So, so I got to do forty deals a year to make two hundred grand, ish. So do you know what you have to do to do 40 deals? So like how many leads do you have to generate to take one listing, make one sale? I need to be, I mean, I need to be talking, I need to be, I think I need to be talking to 25 people, 20 to 25, 20 to 25 people a day. I need to talk, talking to a daily, having a conversation with daily or at this point. So I can, be, I can be prospecting three to four hours a day. So I got to find a list. I got I to gotta be circle prospecting. I got to do physical owners, Zilla expired, circle prospecting. Which I already said that once. Um, yeah, you gotta, you gotta. I gotta, some I gotta stop and talk to everybody in the, in, in, in the grocery store. Yep. If you, if you, if you look, if you look warm blooded and eager to buy a house, I gotta talk to you. Absolutely. So how you, how, how do you start up conversations like that? You wear you wear t shirts all the time. Says I sell real estate. <laughs> I sell real estate, motherfucker. I actually have a t shirt that says Real Estate Insider on it. And uh, I'm actually developing some other T-shirts that I can uh, that I'll be making available to the public here soon because uh, I think they're pretty cool and I think they're conversation starters. I have uh, several different ways that I start up conversations with people. Uh, you know, when if it doesn't matter if you're at Starbucks or if you're at the grocery store or, or whatever it is. But you know, if you think about it, you know, like if you were a politician, you just need to talk to people, right? And and you're not going to hit it off with every single person you talk to. But you know, you met me. I met Everybody you. Loved me. Yeah, absolutely. We all make friends of Dave away. Yeah, I, I was. Uh, I was actually surprised. You were uh, taller than I thought you would be. Somehow the camera shrunk you a little bit, uh, but not quite as tall as Andrew Gavin. But uh, you're certainly not short. I'm about five eleven. Yeah. And fat, well, as, as as round as I am tall. Yeah, I think I I might be rounder than I might am tall, but I'm working on it. It's fun to eat, you know. That's the thing. I'm always hungry. If broccoli tasted like ice cream, I'd eat it every day. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? <laughs> so I for for every ten people I talk to, I probably get one or one probably average two appointments for every two for every ten people I talk to. You know, the biggest mistake I see agents make when prospecting, uh, and it doesn't matter if it's expired for sale by owner or talking to someone in the grocery store, is why are you, why are you striking up the conversation with them? You know, it, it comes down to your motivation. It's, it's really, for me, it's honestly to be friendly. Yeah. Uh, that's the right place to come from, to make your new best friend. But most agents are coming from a place of, I need a listing because I have to make my mortgage payment. Like, will you list your house with me? Will you buy a house with me? And it's it's ridiculous. And unfortunately, that's kind of what the industry teaches, right? I mean, that's how it's been for since long before I got into business. It's like every no leads to a yes. Doesn't matter if you have to talk to 100 people. Just keep on going. That's why the public doesn't like us as an industry. You know, so why not just go out into the public and, and look for people that are going to become your new best friend? Because you do more than sell houses. That's the other thing uh, that I've put into my program. See, the biggest problem that real estate has is, for example, what do you have to sell, Dave? You, you have one thing. You have what's called a high ticket item. So it's like you, like even like the Mercedes deal, so dealer sells oil changes and they do all kinds of uh, low-hanging fruit, you know, get people in the door type things. Real estate doesn't have that. All real estate has is is one thing to offer, and that's the highest thing. Like, 
if you, you know, like your marketplace, $200,000 sale and $5,000 commission, $5,000 and really that's 10, right? Because they're paying two sides and really they're paying more because that's a split. That's a lot of money for somebody to pay. And, and there was no lower entry point. That's a problem in the industry because there's so many other things that realtors can do for property owners that we don't do because there's no monetary component because we've been taught that we're not supposed to do those things. We're not supposed to charge for those things, but why not? Why, why can't we help people protest their taxes? Why can't we help people uh, interact with uh, the city if they need a building permit? Why can't we be a concierge and, and help people when they need a contractor for something? You know, if, if someone's thinking anything and everything real estate, they should be thinking about going to the real estate agent. You should be thinking about going to the that real estate insider, the person that is going to be able to help them with every single aspect of buying or selling a home. Not just if they want to buy or sell a home, but everything that goes into owning a piece of property. And to me, that's what's wrong with the industry. It, because if you get someone in to your pipeline, your whatever you want to call it, let's call it your store, right? Uh, We've got nothing on our shelves except for this one really expensive thing sitting way in the back corner. Why don't we have these less expensive things that we can do for people, uh, products and services? Because if they're already in the door for you, buying something that's less expensive, when it comes time to make that expensive purchasing decision, they're already your customer. They're not going to. They're not going to interview anyone else. We. I think we've lost our feet. Give me a second. What? Hey, well, we're, you and I are still live. I'm not sure if we're live in the group or not. Oh, I don't uh, know either. I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know what happened. We just we went dark and now we're back. We're back. Oh, we're back. I, yeah, I don't know how the be live thing works. Um, I like Zoom a lot better. I don't know. For some reason, every time I've done anything with be live with anyone, it seems to be problematic. Well, Zoom's a shit ton more expensive. <laughs> yeah. I think it's like 70 bucks a month for what I want to do with it. Ryan's paying 25 bucks a month. Oh, okay. But if I was doing more with it, I'd be all over it. I know Zoom has a program that's only like 14 bucks a month. Maybe maybe that doesn't do what you want to do. I don't think it does the live stuff. Like that. I'll, I'll check and do it again because I actually got to renew in 90 days. Yeah. It might not do the live stuff. But I'm but I'm all I, I do like Zoom because I know Helix and use it, you use it. A lot, of the top, a lot of the top guys use it. Blue jeans. Blue jeans came back to where doing what I was wanting to do. So I may, I may, I may go back to blue jeans after this. Yeah. So it's all about the tools. All about the tools you use. You got to have the right tools. It doesn't matter if you're a carpenter, a mechanic, or a real estate agent. So what's happening here? Zoom affiliate link. Zoom, <laughs> Zoom affiliate link coming soon. Thanks, uh, Andrew Gavin. I don't know if Zoom even offers that. I'm sure they do. Probably. Yeah, I'll do. Yeah, just PM me, Andrew, and I'll send it to you if I ever figure out what it is. Oh, Jesus. I got a good friend that makes it quite a good living off of affiliate marketing. When I say very good living, oh, yeah. Damn good living. He spent six months here and since six months overseas. Yeah, doing? I know guys that are making over a million dollars a year doing it. He's, uh, so. he's, 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 in, he's, in, any, he's in that neighborhood. Yeah, he's yep. in that run. Nice. I got a buddy that was when you, when you downloaded Yahoo, when you downloaded uh, yeah, iTunes, and again you got the yeah, 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 Yahoo toolbar. You can thank him for that. He he got paid two fifty for two two fifty dude for doing that to you. For which toolbar? If you downloaded iTunes, and also you got the Yahoo toolbar. Ah, uh, that was him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I've gotten the, the YouTube toolbar installed a whole bunch of times. I've had to delete it. So I was at a I was at a conference one time. And I sort of got a speaker her when she pulled up her her, her Google or Chrome. Mm -hmm. It was like this much toolbars. Oh God. Yeah. And it was like and her computer was so slow, it was like she had so many viruses on it. It wasn't even funny. I'm like, yeah, I'm not doing a transaction with you ever. I just discovered this, you know what? This is a weird thing that people will probably love. Because like, if you're anything like me, 
you, you probably have a crap ton of tabs open, right? At any given time. Yeah. You do that, Dave? So I, um, I was at a conference in Phoenix about a month ago. And, uh, and I did kind of what you're saying, right? So like I, I was showing this dude uh, my, some funnel stuff in click funnels and he was like oh my god how can we have all those tabs i probably had like 60 tabs going and i'm like well i don't know because i have all kinds of stuff going on what am i supposed to do he's like don't you have one tab i'm like what the heck is one tab so there's a chrome extension called one tab right and so when you have all those tabs all you have to do is click this button it saves all of those tabs into a web page that's then hosted in your browser so really it's all, so it's all there but then obviously it takes up a whole lot less bandwidth so your computer runs faster uh and all that so like you know right now like if i look at my one tab i have actually 170 tabs uh saved in there so um and some of it is like you know maybe an ad came up and i clicked on it but i didn't have time to look at it or whatever and other things are you know stuff that i'm actually working on but it's a uh, super super helpful and, and it helps really keep that that bandwidth under control so that your computer's not crashing and yeah, so I'm, can... a, I'm a plug-in junkie is what i am yeah so I, i'm loving that so the question is dave if you have to make 25 calls a day which really isn't a lot because when i was not gonna have 25, 25 conversations a day 25 conversations a day uh are you gonna do you know what it takes to make that happen so you, you might make you might have to make 100 calls a day well bill I have to. Plain and simple, I have to. My goal in the next four years, my daughter, my daughter is 15. She's a freshman in high school, so three years actually. My goal in the next three years is to have a team in Florida. So yes. I got a lot, I got a lot of things I gotta have. I got so I gotta have a team here to, to do the team in Florida. Because when she graduated high school, I'm not seeing her. I'm not when it, when the wish when the shit is a fan like this, like like the day, I want to go to Florida. Yeah. Yeah. Spend the next four or five months selling homes in Florida. With a team, then come back here when it's warm. The the whole you know, footage. If, if, if I gotta fly back and forth, I'll do that too. <laughs> but I am tired. I am tired of being cold. I am damn damn too shaky for not to be. To, this is this is too 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 much tremoring, not not to be cold. Yeah, and the cold sucks. I hate it. It looks beautiful. You look out the window, and there's it just. Oh, it oh, doesn't look beautiful. It looks white pathetic it's weak well, well i'm lucky i have a beautiful view and it looks amazing but as soon as you step out the door it's like yeah it's it's not amazing it hits you in the face like 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 a big black guy with a lead pipe hitting you right in the face when you walk out the door <laughs> yeah exactly it's like the other like, day like you get mugged by a group of teenagers I, I went to the store yesterday, which I should never do because normally that's my wife does. So it's like, I don't know where anything is. And as I'm loading up the, the car, it's like icicles, right? Blowing, freezing snow, ice, whatever, blowing in my face. I thought I was going to poke my eye out. It was ridiculous. It's like, I'm with you. I want to go to Florida because this is horrible. I got a condo down there. I might as well go down there and use it. Do you have a condo in Florida and you're sitting in Chesterton, Indiana? Well, I've got a daughter in high school. Yeah, but your wife could watch her. <laughs> yeah. Is that a divorce tree in your hand? Oh my, <laughs> oh my God. I'm, so, not that, I'm not that well endowed. So how are you going to make uh, 100 calls a day? Do you know what you have to do as far as... Uh, I'm going to start circle prospecting. I'm going to have to start doing something. Door knock, cold call, and lead generate. And prostitute myself. Bear costumes and and bear costumes and silly skits videos. You let me know how that works out, because uh, you know, it might be another career choice for me. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> oh man! So yeah, let's do something on funnels in the near future, because I I don't think people know enough about funnels and and really what they are and. I think there's a lot of confusion around it, uh, but agents really can lead generate a lot easier than they think they can. I, I believe that they can beat Zillow at their own game. Definitely, uh, if you're someone like in my own marketplace who wants to spend $3,000 a month on Zillow, 
you can produce a whole lot more than the guaranteed 10 leads that like yeah, you said I'm not, I'm not is, everyone back to Zillow at this point Zillow's got to drop their rates or start off me something on the side we never go back to Zillow at this point because the service isn't there I, and I just 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 got just got I've had this conversation before they're going to the op city model yeah well they're they're changing a lot of things like I, I actually just had a call with a guy a few days ago uh, uh, a guy named Vince who's like one of their head like he, he sells stuff to like big teams and and he knows that I'm affiliated with agents across the country and so he was pitching me on this new program they wanted to do and it was a six month deferred billing thirty thousand dollars a month and <laughs> and they gave you a guarantee that if you converted uh, one you know less than one percent of the leads, then they would discount it by 50%. So it's like if you have a six month deferred billing, you're into them for $180,000 after six months. But he was like, but yeah, but if you don't convert 1%, you know, then we'll discount it. I'm like, so then I'll only owe you 90 grand. That doesn't make any sense, Vince. How do you get people to buy this stuff? It's like, well, I don't know, but they buy it. And so then I, I got real detailed. So with them. I'm like, so let me get this straight. So like if I convert one out of a hundred deals, you cut it in half. No, if you convert less than that. Oh, so if I, if you send me 101 leads and I convert one, then, then I get the discount. But if you only send me a hundred leads and I convert one, I don't get the discount. Yeah, exactly. I said, so, okay, Vince. So let me get this straight. Let's say for some reason I convert the first lead you ever send me. Am I ever going to hit 101? Because you guys have a vested interest. You have $90,000 on the table to guarantee that I never hit that threshold that you have to discount. He's like, oh, wow, that, no one's ever caught that before. I'm like, <laughs> uh, <laughs> damn, he's onto a shit. <laughs> I'm like, oh, George, the red alert, red alert. And then that, that ninja assassins might, might be after you, Bill. No, uh, well, I hope not. But, uh, you know, I mean, I love what Zillow does because, you know, they're salespeople, right? And, and like, and I told him, I said, Vince, you know, you, you keep trying to pitch me. Do you know why I never tell you to stop? I never tell you to go away. It's like, no, why? Like, because I, I said, I'm, I'm never going to buy your stuff. But I know that you guys keep, are going to keep pitching and pitching and pitching until I say yes or go away. And I'm not going to tell you to go away because I want to, I want to experience what you're doing. He says, okay, well, why don't you tell me to go away? I said, because, you guys have figured out how to get smart people to buy stupid shit. And, <laughs> and I really want to learn how to do that because I'm a really good salesman, but I've never figured out how to get people to spend a lot of money on something that by your own assessment is almost worthless. Did you ever, they, see, the movie, did you ever see the movie Boiler Room? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Or the, the, the newspaper guy calls Giovanni or VC. Uh-huh. You want to buy the paper? No. Is that the best you can do? Yeah, Come on, sell me the paper, pal. <laughs> That's you Saturday morning eating your eating your frosty your frosty oats. Is that the best you can do, Zillow? Come on, sell me the sell me Zillow for Christ's sake. No, yeah, absolutely. Order, 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 order. Screw you, click. And I, I love it when telemarketers call because I I actually do that to them sometimes because you know when I was uh, geez back in the early two thousands when I had a predictive dialer. Uh, you know, I thought about that boiler room movie every day because that's basically what I was doing. You know, 12 hours a day, I was making calls three out three days a week, three days a week going on appointments. And well, usually, usually when I get a uh, salesperson calling me, I when when they're when they're doing the dialer and they, they they call me and I say hello and it takes like 10 seconds from the say hello back. I say hello. Oh. No, yeah. then, I, then I wait and they say hello. I, I already spoke. You gotta speak now. So you need to <laughs> So I had a lady call me, call me through Zillow one time. I said, hello. And I stopped because I, I didn't know it was a Zillow lead. Yeah. And I was like, hey, I spoke. You speak now. And so it was like, I'm calling at the house on one main street. I'm like, oh, <laughs> I had egg on my face. I sold the house to her, but yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was kind of embarrassing. <laughs> I haven't explained yeah. to her what I was doing. Yeah, well, you can get like uh, a secondary ring. If I was doing the Zillow leads... I'd either uh, pay the phone company for a second number or get like a Zillow or not a Zillow, a Google voice. Uh, like I've got Google voice that I give out uh, publicly. And, you know, uh, most people don't get my cell phone number because, you know, then 
all of a sudden you get tons and tons of calls. Uh, great call, great call. Especially like if you put your cell phone number in the MLS, it's like, I don't know who sells that your number, right? But at least in, in uh, you know, my marketplace, like I, I've tested because I've changed my phone number. And next thing you know, I'm getting the same calls from the same people, but on a different number. So it's either the MLS or it's the Realtor Association or it's NAR or it's the state of Illinois or somebody just is buying into the MLS and then selling the list. But someone yeah. did call me one time and offered me money to get the access to the to my MLS. I'm like, yeah, I'll get barred from the MLS on that one, pal. So we're not playing that game. Yeah, somebody's just messaging me, John Zambia. I don't know why he's not on this call. He just he should be, but we're going to talk about him anyway because for some reason he's out. He's with Keller Williams. And he's always ripping on oh, John. And uh, I like him. He's a good guy. But now he's telling me HomeSmart is bigger than EXP. Maybe you should join them. <laughs> oh, man. EXP probably will be the biggest one day, though, because, I mean, they're just... Well, they're, they're, either gonna, they're either going to be the biggest or they're going to implode. Yeah, I, I agree with that. And they're appealing to agents' greed, and it's really going to come down to are the agents having success? Because if they're not, then they'll implode. If it's just all about some people at the top, making a bunch of residuals on the pyramid, then it'll implode. But if they can really make the agents that are, you know, the, the, the people that are joining them that are closing one, two, three, four, five deals a year, if they can help those people get, you know, to 10 deals a year, then that'll be amazing. But, you know, I haven't heard anything about spectacular training. You know, they offer it through their cloud thing. But, um, Give me, give me that, that's gimmick, and I got nothing against the XP. I think I got some of the some good friends in the XP, and I got some yeah. great people that I like a lot that are in the XP. But that cloud thing, it just seems a little gimmicky. It's it's definitely interesting. I went in there one time and I made my name Gary Keller, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was hilarious. Because uh, so it was kind of fun, but uh, yeah, like you said, it's kind of gimmicky, and I'm not going to go hang around in there. Um, and I don't, I don't, I doubt if most of the agents do hang around in there, but it, it, it's neat in the, in this, in the sense that like, if there's going to be a company meeting, people can go in there, but like they could also do zoom or, you know, any other kind of, you know, be live if it accepts that many people or. I like, a, I like a company that uses zoom because you know, with, with there's a, the MLM, the, the, the MLM and real estate, you're absolutely right, Jessica. The MO. <laughs> and they is, are. In, 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 no offense to anybody at EXP, but usually when I get a friend from when I get a friend request from someone in an agent at EXP, I wait. It's a, it's a countdown for the pitch. Yeah. One, two, yeah. three. And here's the pitch, and it's a swing and a miss. Well, it's funny, too. Like you could put on your, uh, on your Facebook page, The Cure for Cancer, and like, Three people might comment on it, but if you say, "Hey, do you have you ever heard of EXP?" Like you'll get five thousand comments. <laughs> <laughs> it's like ridiculous. <laughs> Exit Realty used to be that way, and I, I think they learned uh, their lesson. I was with Exit uh, back, and I started there in two thousand four, and agents were uh, going so willy nilly with the recruiting that it really hurt. It hurt the brand. Um, and I don't think they ever recovered. And maybe they will someday. Because I think Exit's a great company too, and there's a bunch of great companies. Uh, uh, but you guys with the ex Exit, Jay Kim, absolutely. Rocks I'm, tell, I'm telling John to get on the podcast. KW was the first. Was the first uh, MLM in real estate. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, I like KW. Uh, but like their whole residual thing, I don't really know anybody making any money. Uh, there's probably someone, but I've never met them. I've always said if I was ever ever leave my company, I'd go to KW. If I ever leave my company, I mean they have great culture and all that kind of stuff. But when when Gary declared that we're not a real estate company, we're uh, a coaching company, and then you change it again. We're not a real estate company or a coaching company. We're a technology company. Now I think he's getting ready to say, "Well, we're not a real estate company. We're not a coaching company. We're not a technology company. We're a friggin' we're bank. Amazon. We're a bank. Like that's the next thing he wants to be. It's like, dude, 
make up your mind already. But it doesn't seem to be hurting them. Agents seem to be liking it. So uh, whatever, more power to them. I mean, I mean I've had, I got a transaction that I'll close tomorrow with a KW agent. I have to say it was probably the one of the best transactions. It was a difficult transaction. Yeah. But with a transaction, nonetheless, that was one of the best transactions I ever had with another agent. She was responsive, easygoing, fair, and easy on the eyes. <laughs> Come on, Dave. You shouldn't be judging them by that. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. He judged me that way. She told me I was cute. Well, you are. <laughs> So anyway, I'm 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 a flight back from LA. Sit next to a girl who's twenty she's twenty two years old. I was completely invisible to her. I was just trying to be friendly and nice and just just have a little conversation with her on the flight. Yeah. And she couldn't roll her eyes more than 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 anybody than my own daughter. I mean, I was like I was completely invisible to her. I was like, you know what? Enjoy your flight. I'm gonna sit there and just watch my movie. I was oh my god. Nice. I hate talking to people on the plane anyway. I a couple well, years ago, to talk the entire time. I was just, you know, we had five minutes. We couldn't turn, we couldn't be on our phones. Yeah. The kids is like, where'd you go to school? Loyola, Marymount. Oh, the spiders. Yeah. Nope, the lions. Damn, I screwed that up. Good yeah. football team, West End, and, and just, just completely invisible to her. I was, I was, I was her father times ten. Maybe, maybe you should have asked her if she wants to make a million dollars in real estate. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I was the creeper, according to Jessica. I wasn't creeping on her though. Yeah. So as far as she, as far as she knew, she knew. Yeah. Well, you know what the difference between creepy and friendly is? The uh, handshake. Yeah, it's if the girl is attracted to you. Like that's the only difference. <laughs> <laughs> that's well, the good news is I'm not the creeper to my wife. That's all. That's the good news. That's really all that matters at the end of the day. You know. Sometimes I actually wonder if my wife thinks I'm the creeper, but it's a entirely different podcast. So someone says platinum real estate, which I've never heard of platinum real estate is getting pretty big here. Yeah. Have you, have you heard of platinum real estate? I haven't heard of platinum, but I've heard of platinum mortgage. I've, you know, like everyone's got Keller Williams platinum, Exa Realty platinum, you know, stuff like that, but not, not specifically platinum. I know, I've never heard of them. Yeah. I know my company is is going to start pushing for national national recognition in the next six six months to a year. Yeah, actually, uh -huh. they're, they're starting January first. How many agents do you have? One hundred thirty. Okay. So, one office. Four. Oh, four. Okay. Well, four. They have they have two satellite offices in West Lafayette, Indianapolis, T Tennessee. I think I, I don't know the whole in, ins and outs. Yeah, they got they got some things rolling on here very soon that I that I do know about that I cannot say anything about at this point. But they got some good things coming. They got some good things rolling out here that they're gonna they're gonna do a push nationwide as well. And it's not gonna be MLM MLM based either. It's only about putting yeah. money in the pocket of the agent. You know, and that's the best model I think. You know, if you want to create loyalty, help agents make more money. I mean, and, 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 and that's the way it always is. They they think, and it's not a, it's not a pitch for my my company at all. That and this is the way most. I wish most most companies thought their client is the agent, not the client. Yeah, absolutely. That's the way it is, and and it, it even goes up a level because the corporate in any of these companies, it seems like they don't realize who their client is. You know, like their client is you, how most of them are structured is really the regional owner. The regional owner should take care of the broker. The broker should take care of the agent. The agent should take care of the public. But like they're all focused on the wrong things and that's why the whole industry is messed up and the public wishes there was a new and better solution, a different solution. The, the public's really looking for a new opportunity. I guess uh, Andrew's bitching that we didn't we didn't we did not talk about goals enough tonight. We didn't talk about goals enough, Andrew. We told you how to measure and figure out where your goals should be. How many how many properties do you want to sell? So, like, you know, Andrew's lucky, right? Because he's in San Diego, where he can list multi million dollar properties. So, if he wants to make the 100%. same hundred eighty thousand dollars you do, all he has to do is sell one house. You know, 
So I, I, I don't know if Andrew counts, but I know that Andrew's, you know, and I love Andrew. I'm not bad mouthing Andrew. But bad mouthing, bad mouthing, bad mouthing. I don't, I don't think Andrew's going to make the 100 calls a day that he needs to make to have the 25 conversations so that he can list 40 properties, but it, 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 which is a shame because if he listed 40 properties in San Diego, he'd probably make a million dollars a year. What should an agent do right now to start preparing for 2019? Figure out what you want. That's it. Because until you know what you want, how the hell are you going to get it? What do you want? And most people are not motivated by money. So even like that $180,000, Dave, if I was working with you, uh, I would be like, well, why do you want to make $180,000? Like, what are you going to do with it? Like, do you need money to send your daughter to college? Do you, are you, do you want a car that's like a ridiculous car? No. Nope. Because you know, like just banking it, like probably isn't really going to turn you up. It's not, but it, but it, but I'm thinking long term at this point. I mean, I'm I'm thinking long term with my, with my Parkinson's. Mm -hmm. I've got five to ten years before my Parkinson gets worse. So if I if I start banging money now and five and I can build a team in the next five the next five years, when my Parkinson gets worse and there, if there's no cure in the next five to ten years, which I think there will be in the next five to ten years, I'm golden. I mean, I got a nice yeah. nest egg. I'm 55 years old. I can I can I can put the cruise on a little bit. And go to Florida and relax. You got to hit up Michael J. Fox for some referrals. So the funny story about that is, <laughs> hold on, hold on here. So I used to date a girl in high school named Don Ann. We were friends on Facebook. All of a sudden, we weren't anymore. I figured, it was, okay, it was my politics because I'm around a Republican asshole, and she's a Democratic jerk. We weren't friends anymore. I figured, well, she's in front of me because I'm a Republican jerk. Well, are you she's, sure? She's, because you're well, a well, a jerk and jerk in so many other ways as well. She reached out to me one day. She's like, "What's going on?" I'm like, "Nothing." He's like, "How about you?" She's like, "Well, nothing." How come you in front of me? I said, "I didn't." You in front of me? We, we, I think Facebook unfriends people just to mess with them. I'm convinced of that. We couldn't uh, find out her husband is a Parkinson's researcher on the board of Michael J. Fox. Oh yeah. Knock on wood. I got an in. All the good drugs. That ah, damn dog. It was me, you barking, you jerk. I bark a little bit. That dog starts barking. It was just a little funny story. I'm not even drunk yet, though. <laughs> so Margaret Cris Crispillo, which, who I love, and I've been on her podcast, too, she said, I thought it was at 6 p.m. Pacific time. Well, it is. It was. <laughs> It's 8 o'clock well, Central, 9 o'clock Eastern, 6 o'clock Pacific. And we've gone for an hour. Yeah, oh, absolutely. My dog is broken. Your dog is always barking at somebody. Is that uh, a bad Bill's neighborhood? <laughs> Did oh, I lose no, you? Then my internet is freezing up. Uh oh. Go oh, back, go back, go back, go back. It's me, it's me. And the damn dog is interviewing the internet. Oh well, maybe maybe it ate your router. Your router's in the basement. They can't get to the basement. Yep. Okay, Andrew. So, well, Phil, when do you want to do? When do you want to do this again? Want to do it first? Want to do it the first of the year? We can do it the first of the year. I'm also going to be launching my podcast uh, very soon. You can see my uh, new backdrop, and um, I've got everything set up. You know, like a. a can you guys even see that? Can't see it because the way B Live does it. But I've got my mic here just off screen, and uh, yeah. So let me have you on my podcast as well. And I and, and you know you uh, want me. You know, and I, I don't. Do you call this a podcast or is this like? Well, uh, if I ever if I ever took the time to rip the rip the audio off and upload it, they give you a podcast. Yeah, exactly. So, so I, I used to do a podcast and. For some reason, I'm unable to see the comments anymore. It's like Facebook is freezing everything. Uh, Marianne Speem Airman just said time management's the key. Start looking for, uh, for expires two three months. Yeah, I mean, 
the way I always play the expired game is like, and, and my opinion is it's the best way is, is call them immediately. You know, if they came off the market today, I want to call them today. Uh, because but, but also it pays to call it goes, pay goes back to this three to six months ago and call the ones that expired three to six months ago because they're oh. the ones that got they expired and like i'm so pissed off at agents right now i don't want to talk to anybody but yeah, well, here's they the still, thing. Like, to move. here's the way i look at it like on day one right yeah you could go back three to six months and and, and uh look them up and start calling but you should never have to do that again because now they're in your database, right? Right. And, and you continue moving forward. But I, I, when I continuously hear agents, well, I'm going to go back three to six months. Well, if you're doing it on a schedule, it doesn't have to be every day, but like even if it's one day a week that you're calling expireds and maybe a different day you're calling for sale by owners, it just really comes down to what's good for you and how much time you want to put into it. Uh, you know, You have to create a system that's sustainable that you can do it on whatever your schedule is going to be. Um, I personally like the, you know, call for three hours a day schedule because that's not too tough. Uh, and just, and do nothing but call during that time. Uh, you know, in, it doesn't matter if it's expired for sale by owners, your sphere of influence, following up with leads, whatever the case may be. If you're making those those calls three hours a week, uh, you're going to generate some business. Or it's not oh, three three hours a day. Eddie, Eddie Amatuji. Eddie, I use Land Voice. My company uses my company. My, my company pays for Red X, but I use Land Voice. Uh, I use Land Voice for because it also gives me uh, circle prospecting, old expireds, uh, gives me um, uh, uh, agent um, circle, circle prospecting, um, pre pre uh, pre foreclosures, and things like that. And I love Land Voice. Um, I used it for years and years and years and i started with them when it was warnox by owner and then they eventually sold out and became uh land voice uh it, they've got a great system and great data and if anyone is thinking about land voice i i know that they're running uh, a cyber monday sale like i'm sure everyone is but i just happened to look at an email from them this afternoon it seemed like they had a pretty good deal going on that's why I bought Red X last year was on Cyber Monday, but I just got it. I was just got a hell of a deal with Land Voice for a thousand bucks. Yeah, and it was. I mean, I got all the services plus three counties. Yeah, for a hundred for a thousand bucks, and I, 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 I got quadruple the services for twice as much as I was paying for Red X. And I was like, "What's well, this? It's no brainer." Yeah, I I like Land Voice. So it works really good. Uh, you know, we we've got. Uh, you know, not everybody's numbers are available, but you know, that's going to be the same with, with every single site. And, and sometimes the real estate agent's phone number might be in there or whatever, but you know, I mean, that just goes with the territory. It comes down to how, you know, how, what data is available. So, you know, in, in my MLS agents put their own phone number in where it says owner phone number. And uh, there's nothing anybody can do about that. Wow. That's when you just blow them up. That's, that's what they get. If you are blown up with their phone calls, that's their, that's their problem. Yeah. But, you know, you can add them to your own personal, you know, do not call. So, like, when that, you know, and, and obviously, like, if a phone number comes up, like, you know, 658 4000, well, it's probably, you know, a real estate office or something. Uh, kind of easy to tell. Uh, what, do you, what do you think about the uh, do not call? Do you blow right through it? I don't want to say a blow right through it because then someone's going to say, well, Bill said, and uh, you know, so I, so don't sue me, sue Bill. Uh, you know, there's, there's a right way and a wrong way to do it. Like if you're going to call, do not call. You know, if you're going to call numbers on the do not call list, then you need to know the rules. So basically, you know, a survey is exempt. So you need to be uh, asking a survey question, right? Oh. Uh, in, in, you know, but definitely you want to look up the rules. You know, some people say, well, you know, if someone's advertising their phone number, they're looking for a call, you know, but, you know, I, I really can't tell people whether they should or should not do it. It's a business decision that they have to make. You know, I, I know what I do. I know what, uh, you know, my students do, uh, but you know, there's, there's more that really needs to go into it. I can't just say, yeah, it's okay to go ahead and call them because you really have to know what you're doing. Otherwise, you can get sued. Uh, you know, a guy I just happened to meet at a, a conference, 
uh, a speakers conference in LA. Uh, when, when I was doing my pitch, he came to me afterwards. He's like, Hey, uh, you know, I just wanted to talk to you a minute because, you know, we, one of the things that you told me said in your story about making all these phone calls is like, you know, are you familiar with the, the rules and regulations? Because like, I'm actually a class action lawsuit attorney and my specialty is going after people for do not call violations. And I'm like, well, <laughs> yes, I am fully aware and cognizant of the rules, but hey, let's have lunch and, and we can talk some more and he can you know, tell me some stuff. So um, the, the bottom line is anything like that, that's you know, the, a law that the government can hit you with massive fines, it's got to be your business decision and you better know the rules, otherwise you're asking for trouble. In Indiana, there's there's a little known law that we can we can assert around it, but it's not it's not a federal law, so you can, you can only do so much. Yeah. Bill, that was the end of the bottle. It's ten o'clock. All right, it's nine o five at this point. As always, appreciate you coming on. Next week, I have no no one on for next week, but we'll do a show anyway. We'll figure it out between now and then. At the end of the year, we're gonna do my goals. I'm gonna write my goals down, and we're gonna go through my goals word for word, topic for topic. Anyone wants to pick one apart with you, you're welcome to come come here and pick one apart. I'm laying myself. I'm laying myself at, at the last show of the year. Will be my goals, and what I'm going to do to to achieve them. That's exactly it, Dave. You got to lay out the, the definitive plan of what it's going to take for you to actually achieve those goals. Otherwise, it's just talk. If you don't have a plan to implement, how are you going to implement your plan? That's the bottom line. Not even a oh, you got a couple of drops out of it. There you go, Eddie. Just for you, buddy. The last few drops. All right. Hey, we didn't even get to talk. I, I just created uh, a special report, and it, it's called uh, Three Costly Mistakes That Most Realtors Make That Are Killing Their Conversion. So if anybody wants to PM me or uh, just send an email to bill at billcrane.com, be more than happy to uh, share that. Otherwise, if you're following me on Facebook, uh, you'll see it offered out there in the near, fu near future. Anyway. Uh, because I've identified some things that most realtors are definitely screwing up, uh, especially with social media. So oh, yeah. until next time, Dave. Uh, Just put it in the know. comments, Bill. Put your name, put your email in the comments. Put what you want to offer in the comments. I'll pin it to the top. All right, Bill. As always, a, you're you're a great guest. You're you're you and Misha are the uh, two top returners. I gotta have Misha on again in here very soon. The Mad German. Who's killing it down in Missouri, all by himself, his second year as an agent. Gotta have it. Gotta have him on one more time. Maybe, maybe next week we'll have him on one more time. Am I too late? You're too late, but you can take, you can take this class if you like. Fair enough. All right. The wife comes so, and takes my. Sh did you actually drink time. the entire bottle? She's taking the last class. So that he doesn't drink the entire bottle. That is my job. I don't know how you keep up with him, but. God bless you. Oh, no. I do not keep up with you. I have a glass, so he will have an entire bottle minus a glass. Ah. Well, that's good. Do you want to duck down so many people can see you, for Christ's sake? Oh. I, well, I don't know where. Right here. There's the coming? camera. There. Okay. There I am. There's my beautiful wife, everybody. Okay. Wow. So at some point, Dave was a good salesman. Uh, we're not sure what happened. <laughs> We don't know what happened after that. <laughs> I have I have three words for you. Bait and switch. <laughs> the oldest trick in the book. Congratulations, Dave Woodson. Yeah, bait and switch. Because she's a she's an actuary for Christ's sake. Oh she she ran the numbers and I still came out on top. Well yeah. Well, you used to be smooth. I used to, <laughs> I used to be <laughs> You're still smooth. All right, man. Bill, well, appreciate you coming on. And John, John Grimes will have you on soon enough. Misha, if you're you're listening, we'll have you on maybe next two weeks. Andrew, you, as always, you can bite me. And uh, you guys have a good night. And we'll see you next week. And we'll go from there. Bill, have a good night, buddy. See you have soon. Have a good night, Dave. We'll see you around. All right, buddy. As always, guys, thanks for thanks for tuning in. If you guys have any questions for me, you could be called 219-872-8000, 219-872-8000, or email me at dwoodson at gmail.com, dwoodson at gmail.com. I'll see you guys next week. Same bad time, save Dave time, and save Dave channel.
See you then. Bye. See you, Bill. Right. See ya.